This is another episode of ADF Architecture TV. Today, I will talk about time zone management. By the way, I am Frédéric Debien, a member of the ADF product management team. Time zones are a really important dimension of internationalization because if you remember way back, when we were talking about locales, a locale is a set of characteristics that apply to a country or a region. And time zones, they are linked to the geography. If you live in a specific town, then automatically you belong to a specific time zone. So, when you think about internationalizing your application, you will need to make decisions about how exactly to handle the time zones in the dates and times you are manipulating. And this is really important because it can have for you legal implications. If you are, for example, asked to provide to the court data about a specific transaction, you need to be sure that the time zone was recorded properly in order to know what time exactly a transaction was entered in your servers, for example. So, you know, time zone management has really wide implications and you need to ensure that you manipulate dates and times correctly in order to preserve the time zone information. So, in this episode, we'll talk a bit about the supporting classes for time zone management in Java Standard Edition and then we'll discuss a bit a few specific uh, issues that are linked to some ADF components. When we consider Java Standard Edition, the most fundamental class for date time manipulation is the Java Util Date class. It's been around, you know, since Java 1.0. Currently, most of the methods in the date class have been marked as deprecated. And why that? This is because in Java 1.1, there were wide, very, very important changes that were made to the date time APIs. But since then, they've been mostly stable. When you create a new instance of a date object, if you don't pass any parameters, you will get the current date and time for the JVM, okay? The tricky part about it is that implicitly, okay, there is a time zone attached to that value even if you didn't specify one. And by default, okay, the time zone selected will be the default one for the JVM. When you want to specify another time zone, you can do it explicitly, but by default you will get the current one for the GVN, and the GVN typically will retrieve the time zone from you know, an operating system parameters unless you, know, you passed a parameter on the command line to the GVM, for example, or that you set some parameter in a properties file. Okay, so the date input-output formats are determined by the default locale for the JVM, but you can override okay, those settings and uh, obviously you can explicitly select another locale than the current one if you need to. Now, typically when you have to manipulate date and times, you will not use the date class but rather calendar or one of its descendants and the most widely used class uh, for that is Gregorian calendar because this is the calendar that is uh, used in most uh, Western European countries as well as in Canada and the United States. Alright, that said, okay, there are many things that you can do with the current uh, daytime APIs, but in Java 8 there will be big changes coming. We will come to that, you know, um, in another slide. But for the time being, there is one important thing to remember. When you manipulate those dates in Java, okay, if you are processing date and times coming from the database, you may run into some issues. Uh, specifically, if you are using the Oracle database and that you assigned, you know, the sysdate value to any column in the database, you must remember that sysdate will return the 
date and time in the time zone for the database server and that time zone is maybe different than the one for your application server and probably it is different from the one in which your end users are living so this is really important maybe it's all right to record in your database the time zone for the database server but if not you need to pay attention and ensure that you process date and times properly in order not to put inaccurate data in your database and now uh, let's have a look at the upcoming changes in Java 8. The date time APIs currently available in Java Standard Edition work but they are a bit cumbersome to use and frankly there's a learning curve. So for Java 8 there's been a JSR introduced just to fix that. This JSR is JSR 310. Okay, so in Java 8 to represent the current date and time, you will use not Java Util Date but Javax Time Clock. There will be classes that will enable you to have human readable values for date and times. So there's a trio that will uh, get you the local date and time and that means for the time zone the GDM is running in and those will be local date, local time and local date time. On the other hand you will have classes dedicated to manipulate values with a time zone offset and those will be offset date, offset time and offset date time. There will be also two utility classes that will explicitly enable you to manipulate you know, the time zone offsets and this is, those are zone offset which will, specify, which will specify the offset for a specific time zone and then you will have zone ID which will be the identifier for a specific time zone so by passing the correct zone ID you will get the proper zone offset and with that offset you will be able to produce instances of offset date, offset time and offset date time. So the nice thing about this API is that it's very clear what we're talking about at you know uh, whatever object we are using and at the same time it is much uh, more intuitive to use than what we currently have in Java Standard Edition. If you have to select or propose a time zone management strategy for your application, you need to ensure that you're in line with your corporate policy. The reason for this is quite simple. If your organization needs to provide data in the context of a legal procedure, it is essential to ensure that the date and times enclosed in that data record time zones in a consistent fashion. Otherwise, maybe courts will take decisions according to inaccurate data. Now, for reference, in Oracle's Fusion applications, there are three main time zone management strategies available. The first one is called the corporate reporting zone. And basically it means that all date and times are displayed in the time zone for the server. And by server here we mean the application server. Then there is the user preferred time zone strategy. And in that strategy you will display all date and times according to the preferred time zone for the end user. So probably you will have a preference setting somewhere that the user will be able to specify. And finally, there is the legal entity time zone where all date and times will be displayed according to an arbitrary time zone that you will have selected. And this is typically for uh, legal purposes. So now, the important thing to remember is that the way you display data and the way you store it, for example, in the database are two distinct things. And you need to ensure that uh, everybody involved when developing applications knows what are the database settings and you know explicitly states what is their preferred 
time zone management strategy for the code they will write. Typically, in most cases, organizations will store data and times in UTC in the database. But if you make another selection for whatever reason, you will have to write some code in order to ensure that everything is displayed properly in your Java or ADF application. There are subtle time zone related issues when you try to build user interfaces with ADF. And here uh, in the next few slides, I will illustrate the most common one. So suppose you have an input date somewhere in a page or page fragment and inside you will have a validator and a convert date time uh, tag in order to specify the format you want the date time to be recorded in. So you have this nice pattern where you put a Z at the end to specify that you want to uh, read and write the time zone for the date time value. Okay, so there are no problem. When you run the page, everything displays perfectly. You will get a date time picker and uh, on the screen you will get the value for the time zone that was selected by the end user. However, uh, the thing is, if you send this to the database, what will be recorded in the database is different. And in this case, we see that the value was recorded in the time zone for the database server, not in the time zone that has been selected by the end user. Why is that exactly? Well, the, issues, uh, the issue here lies with JavaScript. In Java, when you create a date object, there is an implicit time zone attached to it and you can manipulate that time zone in order to get the proper value. In JavaScript, there is no concept of time zones. Okay? So when you create a date in JavaScript, you don't get a time zone attached to the value and you will get okay, on the server side a time zone for the values you're getting from the browser according to the browser settings. Okay, so basically that means the selected time zone for your hand user's machine will be the one attached to the value you receive through JavaScript. So this is obviously cumbersome. Now there are two strategies you can use in order to mitigate that problem. And the first one is to simply uh, use other controls that the, than the date picker to manipulate the time zone. So you will use the date picker to specify the date and time and have, for example, a drop-down list in order to select the time zone. And then you retrieve all of that on the server side. And uh, then you will have a date time that will be meaningful and in the correct time zone. The other strategy would be to force ADF to use always the same time zone. If this fits your time zone management strategy, then the only thing you have to do is to put a specific value in the uh, faces config descriptor. And there, okay, you put the code for the time zone you want everything to be recorded in and you, will, you won't have any problem. The funny thing about time zones is that they are a purely human invention. They were introduced in the 19th century in order to facilitate travel by train. Before time zones, traveling by train was very complicated because the time varied by a few minutes, you know, for every city you were uh, crossing along your way. So it was very, very difficult to plan in advance a trip since okay, all those time variations made uh, train schedules very, very complicated to understand and read. Now, we've left those issues behind, but time zone management is still an essential part of internationalization. The challenge here is not technical, because ADF and Java Standard Edition give you everything you need in order to process date times and time zones correctly. But the challenge is rather functional. You need to pick an explicit time zone management strategy and enforce it 
you know, for all the applications you are developing. You also need to ensure that data is rec recorded in a consistent way in your databases, otherwise maybe at some point you will have bad surprises in court. Now, the nice thing about ADF is that it will abstract most of the complexities for you, but you still need to plan and make uh, well-thought choices uh, when selecting your time zone management strategy. That's it for today's episode of ADF Architecture TV. I'm Frédéric Desbiens. Thank you for watching.